Bart, Michael, and Don, how you doing? What's going on, God, fellas? Listen, Don, this may be a little bit too real for you. So if it's too real for you, you need to walk out the room. Just go ahead, because I don't think we even need to discuss the Jets because they're where we thought they were going to be. Let's, wow. discuss, let's, let's discuss these New York Giants. And Landon Collins, I love him, but he wasn't keeping it all the way real. I don't have that problem. Well, God, you understood what he said? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 deco I, de I can decode BS. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right, let's start with this, because I, I always, I've always heard that this to be the truth, Bart. When an offense is struggling and a defense is good, is there serious animosity in that room between the two sides? It's, it's not. It's not that much animosity when you look at the the payroll, right? You understand that you know the majority of the money is getting paid on the defensive side, so they got to bear the brunt of uh, the responsibility. Because if you want a better offense, you got to pay for it. They wanted a better defense. They needed a better defense, and they had to go pay for it. And that's part of the problem. And, you know, having to pay JPP again this year is part of the problem. That's why you can't go out and get a left tackle. See, now, I made a suggestion last week, and everybody looks at me like I'm crazy. I'm like this loquacious, like, big loudmouth, right? But, you know, if you just decode not the method, but the message, you can understand. Now, Eli Apple got exposed, so now you can't trade him for as much because now he looks like he's, he, he's a liability. The only way you get out of this is by going out and making a major trade. If not, you're going to waste Eli Manning, who has about two years left, you know, right. maybe in him at a high level. And, you know, just watch what happens. I've been around this game for a long time. I've been on great teams. I've been on teams where the scenes started to come, come apart. It's, I smell diesel fuel. And it's going to be in a minute, in a week or two, if this thing continues to go the direction that it's going, it's going to start being some finger pointing. And, you know, they can't really blame the offensive coordinator because it's not the plays that he's calling. It's the fact that they can't execute them. So then they're going to go to the offensive line coach, and you might see somebody get fired from there. And, you know, Jerry Reese, everybody's going to go into protection mode because if this team doesn't make it to the playoffs after being considered a Super Bowl contender – and they can't even win their division, let alone make the playoff, some heads got to roll, and that's just the nature of the business. All right, everybody wants Joe Thomas. He's one of the best left tackles there are in football. Cleveland, obviously, is thinking about the future. What realistically can you offer Cleveland to get Joe Thomas? Is that possible? Um, it's possible, but you're going to have to give up a player, and you're going to have to give up a future first-round draft pick. He's a Hall of Fame player, still the best left tackle in the game. He's not going to go for it. He's not going to come. You're not going to get him for cheap. So if you want Joe Thomas, you're going to have to pay for him. Because, listen, you can't protect both sides of the line. You know, listen, I've seen some bad lines. Don, you are right on point. This might be the worst line I've ever seen. And, listen, if I was, had them on the scouting report I was playing the, the, the New York Giants, I, we would be playing rock, paper, scissors, fighting to see who can get over Eric Flowers because those, this is an opportunity, to, opportunity to, to really patch a Pro Bowl stats and, and, and make an all-pro based off of him. I would love to be in this division right now. Now, let me ask you this, Bart. Let's say they can't make a deal. Is there any way you could spackle this or fix no. it up that it could be better? No. You can How put, about with Max Protect and keeping guys in? You, you can put you can put Pew, but then what's, what's happening is it, that's great if you're going to Max Protect. and They can bring the extra lineman in and, and make them play tight end and all that stuff. But if, at this point, they still can't run the football. It would be different if they just can pass protect and they can run the football effectively. They can't even run the football. The Detroit Lions was disrespecting them with a six-man box. Six-man box, sometimes one linebacker in the right. box. And they still wasn't effective running the ball. And what you're starting to see is this defense is starting to have cracks in it. You know, yeah, it's not, it's, you know, you're talking about giving up 120 yards. But you gave them 120 yards. To the Lions, who can't run the football, who thought that they could run the football, and, and yeah, they didn't beat them man to man. They beat them with zone protections, pulling guys, you know, te and, and getting angles. But listen, if they can't fix it against the Lions, what are they going to do when the Eagles come to town? Oh, the I know. Buccaneers. What are they going to do? Listen, they got one. They got one war daddy on the Lions, and that's Ziggy. What are you going to do when you got to go against Cox and, and Jernigan and, and Graham? Or what are you going to do when you got to go against Bosa and Ingram? Like, what are you going to do when you go against Von Miller? You go against the Seattle Seahawks. They should be licking their chops. And if they don't fix it now, the Giants can be out of the playoffs probably by um, um, October 22nd no. when they face the Seattle Seahawks. Now listen, they go 0-3, Bart. 
That'd be 0 and 2 in the division, where we both probably agree you want to at least go 4 and 2 in the division if you're going to come out of it. I mean, I think I, you lose the you lose the Phil. I, I'm saying it's over now, Bar, because I'm seeing I'm seeing seven and nine best case scenario from this team as presently constituted. If you lose to Philadelphia, you're 0 and 3, having to go to Tampa. Season's over. Somebody sent Ben McAdoo a text message and said he doesn't he hasn't earned the right to publicly criticize Eli Manning yet. He can flick the hair back and do the whole Pat Pat Riley thing. But listen, Eli Manning has put in work here, and it's your responsibility to get him protected. So, you know, listen, like you find out a lot about people doing adversity. Like Eli has been too good of a, of a football player, too good of a person in this community to have his head coach pouring diesel fuel and backing over him when he has opportunity. Now, uh, McAdoo talking to the media right now says he's absolutely going to keep Flowers at left tackle. What could the reason be? Are we not seeing things right here? Listen, the, 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 listen, proud to get you, get you beat, man. You know, like thinking that you can fix it and you can coach somebody up. Listen, man, it's only going to get worse, man. The, the opponents get, get better. And that's what happens. Coaches think they can figure it out. And that's, that's part of their problem because they could address this in the off season. They could have made some trades in the off season, you know. Instead of signing Brandon Marshall, maybe they go get a lesser player, you know, or or another player, draft a player, and they go get uh, a left tackle, or they go get somebody. They could have traded. I mean, look 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 at the difference that uh, Whitworth has done for for Jared Goff, just stabilizing that offensive line, and all of a sudden now they can run the football. Look what T.J. Lang did for for the Lions. Look what Riley Reef has done. Like. It only takes one. You can build around and protect one. Now you trying to you trying to protect Eric Flowers. That's just you. Shame on you. You know. But but look for people to start getting fired and start pointing fingers. He's already started by pointing at the at the quarterback. Like when that doesn't work and Eli's just getting hammered and, and the pressure builds up. Now you're going to have some infighting and they're going to start blaming the offensive line coach and fire. You yeah. saw that what happened in Cincinnati. Fired the offensive coordinator. Really in two weeks. Well, that's what you do when you don't score a touchdown at home two straight weeks and you've got guys in the room screaming for Colin Kaepernick. We're talking to Bart Scott, his weekly spot here on the Michael K. Show. Bart, they've had three general managers in 38 years. Yep. Do you see Jerry Reese losing his job if this ends up blowing up on him? Jerry Reese has been on deck, right? He's been on mm -hmm. deck. You know, you talk about you know their playoff appearance, I believe, what they, they missed the playoffs five out of six years. Last year they had a great year. Odell Beckham, I feel, saved his job because he had done a bad job in, in bringing in talent in the draft. And then he goes out and he throws six, $200 million at a problem, throws some more money at JPP. Like, I mean, if you give me, if you give me $200 million, I can put together a good defense as well. You know, but what happens is he left himself vulnerable on the offensive side. And, you know, Landon Collins was saying, hey, he talked to the, some of those 2017s. They had real men. They had experience on that offensive line. And Eli was able to make those clutch throws because he was protected, you know, because they can run the ball. Because, you know, teams aren't even – man, teams, you know how disrespectful it is for you to put six or five people in a box when they have five offensive linemen and say, don't worry about it, we got the run. They're doubling up on everybody. And they're, they're making Eli have to find an open target because they're playing, you know, combo coverages. They're playing, you know, man under, cover one, man free. And, and just and knowing that Eli's not going to run because he can't run. And, I'm, wondering, know, I'm wondering about the message that the coach sent, Bart, and how would you would feel if you were on a team. McAdoo had three timeouts left in the first half. Yeah. And with like a minute 30, the, the, the Lions are getting ready for a field goal. And he lets the clock go all the way down and didn't – I mean, it's like he gave up. Like, I, I don't want to risk having the ball again. What kind of message does that send? Well, well maybe maybe he thought he had T-Mobile and they rolled over to the second half. I don't know what he was thinking. <laughs> he, he, I can't tell it, man. Listen, sometimes we assume that these coaches got it all figured out. You know, he had a good year last year. But, listen, they had a weak schedule last year. This is a, this is a grown-up schedule. This is, this is you had a good record last year's schedule. And, 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 they, and they playing some war daddies, daddies. I mean, you talk about even in the second half, man, having to see Arizona, having to see the Cowboys and, and, and the Eagles again. And, oh, and oh yeah, Kansas City. And, and all of a sudden the Rams don't look like just an a, a, a automatic win. You know, right. this team is in trouble, and they better get it fixed. They got to get it fixed in a hostile environment against a team that they always struggle with. That had that is, that is built the right way. You talk about two good left tackles in, jo in Johnson and Peters. You're talking about you know a, a tremendous defensive line on the other side. And you think you know and and you don't have to worry about their back end because the back end would be sitting on routes because you know they understand that their front four is going to get pressure immediately. And this is before they even bring in the reserves to come in and Bennett and some of the other talent that they have on that side of the ball. 
Why, why do you think he threw Eli under the bus? I mean, okay, Eli didn't have a great game, but it certainly didn't How seem like he? it was his fault. How could he? The one time the, the kid jumped up and smashed his head into the ground, if he'd have had that gazoo helmet on, he might have been in the concussion protocol.